Welcome to How You Live It, a transformative podcast featuring best selling author, inspirational speaker, and minister, Dr. Rick Rigsby. And now, Dr. Rick. Hello, friends. Thanks so much for listening. How would you like to elevate the quality of each and every day, even the bad days, even the difficult days? What if I were to tell you it's well within our power to do so? That is, if we choose to live with a positive attitude. I want to talk specifically about the power of being positive. Positivity refers to being optimistic in life, going through the day with an optimistic outlook, going through the day filled with hope and the expectation that good outcomes are going to occur. Learning to think more positive affects our well-being. According to an article in Psychology Today, self-directed positive thinking works to buffer us from the effects of stress. More on that in a moment. Right now, let's look at having a positive outlook positive outlook that expands our expectations, a positive outlook that fills our heart with hope. We become more open to ideas that develop effective ways to cope with situations when we're positive. We actually have this attitude that believes that we can accomplish anything. We can react in a positive way to all situations that we're expecting good outcomes. I love having a positive attitude. I remember once hearing that it is your attitude, not your aptitude, that determines your altitude. I want a positive attitude. I'm learning that to maintain that positive attitude, I've got to work. I've got to protect myself from all these negative impulses. What you feed your brain becomes very important. All that input is not necessarily good for us. And I want to protect myself from every negative impulse that I possibly can. Here's one. How about being critical of others? Why do I need to be critical of others? I've been so challenged and so inspired by the brilliant writing of Jay Shetty on this subject. He he spent time alternating between the business world and a monastery. Can you imagine that? He writes about this in his book titled, Think Like a Monk, Train Your Mind for Peace and Purpose Every Day. Chetty shares an experience that he had in the monastery, an exercise that he learned with other monks that really challenges me to this very day. The exercise focused on not being so critical of others, thus creating a more positive environment in the mind. Chetty took a class called, are you ready for this title? Cancers of the Mind. Comparing, complaining, criticizing. Listen to what Shetty discovered. Quote, in the class, we talked about negative thought habits, including gossip. One of the exercises was keeping a tally of every criticism we spoke or thought. For each one, we had to write down 10 good things about the person. It was hard. We were living together in close quarters. Issues came up, most of them petty. I went through the exercise, dutifully noting every criticism I let slip. Next to each, I jotted down 10 positive qualities about the person. The point of the exercise wasn't hard to figure out. Every person was more good than bad. Shetty goes on, this helped me see my own weaknesses differently. I tended to focus on my mistakes without balancing them against my strengths. When I found myself being self-critical, I reminded myself that I too had positive qualities. Shetty learned that putting his negative qualities in context helped him to realize that he is more good than bad. And when we criticize others, we tend to notice the bad in ourselves. But when we look for the good in others, we see the best in ourselves. So friends, I want you to try this example. Try this exercise. It's gonna be a challenge, but give it a shot. I want you to take one day, keep a record of every criticism spoken or thought, then for each criticism, write down 10 good things about that person. This will train your mind to think less negatively and more positive about others and eventually yourself. 
You see, having a positive attitude has so many benefits. There's even a strong link between being positive and improved health. A strong link between being positive and decreasing stress. According to medical experts at Johns Hopkins, a positive attitude improves outcomes and overall satisfaction of our lives. Conversely, researchers have discovered that negative emotions can weaken our immune systems. Bad moods can actually alter the function of our immune systems by increasing inflammation all throughout the body. People who are more positive are better protected against the inflammatory damages of stress. Additionally, a positive attitude fuels a kind of hope that results in healthier, more optimistic decision-making. I was visiting with a counselor recently who discussed her work at a senior assisted living facility. While working with senior adults was immensely rewarding, she did notice something that troubled her. Some residents, not all, but some, were afraid to make new friends for fear that those new friends would pass away. Letting go no matter what stage is difficult. Now imagine having to say goodbye with a sorrowful consistency. These seniors were afraid to hope. That put them in a very negative space. Afraid to hope. That has to affect the quality of life. Being afraid to hope pushes one into the negative realm of life. I mention this because I don't believe that this notion of being afraid to hope is simply limited to an older population living in assistant facilities. I think many of us choose not to be positive simply because we're afraid. Friends, this is not a theory that I read. This is a fear that I lived and I survived to write about it. In my book, Afraid to Hope, Discovering the Courage to Dream Again, I discuss the trauma of losing a wife to breast cancer and choosing to avoid life because of the fear of living life and being hurt again. Psychologists say the avoidance of that which produces pain is among the most powerful of all human impulses. We do everything we can to avoid pain. In my case, Avoidance caused me to lose sight of living well, of living at all. If I was going to survive, I would have to shift my thinking from the negative to the positive. I would eventually remarry. I would have more children and I would move on with my life. However, to this day, there are times that I still struggle with fear. Fear of losing a spouse again. I think that's human. I bet many of you can relate. But what propels me forward into that positive space is this one truth. I learned to confront my fear. I acknowledged it. I confronted it. I came to the realization that I would rather confront and deal with my fear than be afraid to live, afraid to love, afraid to hope. Studies have found that a positive attitude improves outcomes while increasing our satisfaction. So what can we do to improve our positivity each and every day so that our outcomes will be affected, so that our satisfaction for living will increase? I want you to consider just a couple of practical steps. First, reframe the negative moment. Oh, baby, I tell you, I struggle with this one, but it works when I make a choice to allow it to work. Let's use a traffic jam as our case study, all right? I don't know anybody that loves a traffic jam. We all hate them, but they're unavoidable, especially in larger cities. I've examined my behavior in a traffic jam. My first emotion is frustration. And then my frustration leads to a feeling of being disillusioned, thinking I'll never get out of this mess. I'm thinking I'll be stuck for hours when reality it's like stuck maybe for minutes. Right here at this point, I've got a choice right in the middle of this traffic jam. I can either continue my negative space, I can continue living in my negative space, which generates more stress and more frustration, which is not good for my physical health or mental well-being, or I can reframe the moment. How can I use these extra few minutes? Using my hands-free technology, I can call my wife. 
I can call one of my four sons, my daughter-in-laws. I can call my grandchildren, those who are allowed to use a phone. I can call a friend who's been on my mind. I can listen to music and sing along. I can listen to a podcast. I can pray. I can meditate. I can think through a difficult conversation and how I might want to respond. Or I can simply be silent, be quiet, and be still. Friends, I just composed this list in less than 30 seconds. Imagine the ideas you can come up with over the next five minutes that will help decrease the frustration that you experience behind the wheel in the midst of a traffic jam. Second, how about uh, adapting to the moment? Sometimes I have a hard time remembering that change is part of life. Change is actually part of every single day. Adaptability increases our capacity to handle change. This is a challenge because we have to own the change. Rather than wishing that the circumstances will go away, we must make the change internally by adapting. This shift is the only way we'll be able to cope and thrive in a world of change. Here's a simple tip that's easy to remember. While I've heard variations of this statement for years, I originally heard it from former offensive coordinator Steve Craigthorpe when we were on the staff together at Texas A&M University. He spent many years as a quarterback's coach at several universities and for a few years with the Buffalo Bills. Coach Craigthorpe would instruct his quarterbacks with this simple formula, adapt, adjust, overcome. Football often parallels life. Unexpected situations constantly arise. No matter how much you prepare, some of them may catch you off guard. You need clear communication. You must trust your partners and work the problem together. All of these are essential behaviors necessary to make forward progress while adjusting to a constantly changing environment. Adapt, adjust, overcome. Remember this simple coaching point, friends. It will really help in the midst of that negative moment. And the third step we can take to improve our positivity, we can smile. This is my favorite step. I use this step every single day. Friends, I have discovered that simply smiling elevates my mood. It pushes me quickly from the dark side to the light. Check this out. The University of Kansas researchers discovered that smiling, even fake smiling, reduces our heart rate and reduces our blood pressure during stressful situations. Let me say that again. Smiling, even fake smiling, lowers our heart rate and reduces our blood pressure during stressful situations. There's another thing about smiling. I discovered that in difficult times, a simple smile on my face actually serves as a catalyst for reframing the moment. You see, when I smile, I feel compelled to reframe the situation, often shifting from a feeling of disappointment to actually thinking, ah, this ain't so bad. Huh. Remember this, reframe the moment, adapt to the moment, smile in the moment. I believe if we practice these three simple steps with consistency, our physical health will improve, our mental health will become strong, and our overall well-being will increase as we elevate the quality of each and every day. Oh, friends, I think I've just reached the tip of the iceberg. There's so much more to share about the power of being positive. Let's continue this. Let's look forward to having more conversation about this topic. Make sure to look for the second half of this podcast. We'll title it Positive 2.0. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Until we meet again, this is Dr. Rick asking the most important question I can ask. How you living? Are you ready to make an impact in your world right now? Do you want to stop existing and start living your best life right now? Dr. Rick wants to give you the first chapter of his best-selling book, Lessons from a Third Grade Dropout, absolutely free. Just go to www.rickrigsby.com forward slash free gift to get the print or audiobook right now. This is the podcastfactory.com.